Imagine renting a boat with 4,000 people going there specifically to enjoy music, dance, and be together. This is Groove Cruise. This is what Jason Bukema started almost 20 years ago. Enjoy my conversation with Jason. Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Business of Meeting podcast. And today I'm so happy that finally I'll have the time to speak with him. He's traveling around the world. Uh, you might know the Groove Cruise because he's the founder of it. Uh, it's a, an amazing journey. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Jason Bukema. Jason, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Eric. Thank you for having me. I'm really grateful for uh, you reaching out. So I'm, I'm glad you were in front of a computer between all the travels, the events and everything. But I'd like, first of all, uh, for you to explain to the listeners, how did you go to fiberglass insulation to doing tour on a coach around the U.S. to the Chamber of Commerce to Groove Cruise? That's an amazing journey. It's been a long journey. I did a Oh, what was it a lifeline when I first got into entrepreneur organization? And uh, I realized that I had, I think, 26 jobs throughout my life until I was 30, something along those lines. So I graduated from college from Central Michigan University. I was in pre-med about to take the MCAT to go to medical school. And long story short, I job shadowed some surgeons and anesthesiologists and realized I didn't want to go into the medical industry. But my other great uncle, he was a business owner and he was the happiest person I had ever met. And I started thinking about why I wanted to be a doctor and I want to be a doctor because I want to make a lot of money. And the body is fascinating. That was my favorite class in college was anatomy and working on 12 cadavers. But uh, yeah, so my other great uncle was a business owner and he was the happiest person I had ever met. And I remember in his basement, he had this map of pins on it and all the different pins were color coded to a different countries. So I'm like, show me Russia and show me like Argentina and show me Africa and all this stuff. And I was just so fascinated. He was such a happy person. So I decided I want to be an entrepreneur because I can make more money than a doctor can make and I can help more people than a doctor can help. And uh, so started on that path. And I ended up at Georgia Pacific because my business that I had in college failed and I uh, got into a lot of debt and ended up getting a job as a sales manager selling fiberglass insulation at Georgia Pacific, which is a big Fortune 100 company. And then at nights and weekends, I sold timeshares for Radisson Vacation Villas. And, uh, you know, eventually started to get out of debt and they would pay for school. And I was like, well, I don't really want to go back to school, but can I talk you into hiring a Franklin Covey uh, personal coach? And they're like, okay. And so I ended up hiring a coach. I took my boss to go meet Stephen Covey for lunch. And during that process, I, I, uh, my coach said, you know, find something you love to do and find a way to get paid to do it. And if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. So I was like, all right, what do I love to do? Well, I love to go on vacation. So I had to figure out a way to get paid to go on vacations. So I started looking around and found this school in San Francisco called the International Tour Management Institute. And it was a two and a half week course. And I told my, my work that I needed two weeks off for personal reasons. And you never came back. <laughs> no, I tried to come back, but I walked to my desk and they're like, pack up your stuff, you're out of here. And I was the number one salesperson in the United States. I, I had taken my division to like, you know, crazy heights. So, you know, but whatever. It was it was all meant to be. And yeah, I was in the travel industry, uh, doing motor coach, you know, got through the course and then I was kind of thrown into the industry and eventually got hired by a couple of different tour companies. I used to move between Atlanta, LA, and Seattle doing tours motor coach tours throughout North America. My specialty was Alaska and the Canadian Rockies. And I did like historic America tours on the East Coast and national parks tours out West and trips up the California coast. And Wow. Wow. Which part of the US didn't you do? Uh, I didn't do Northeastern Canada. So I'm kind of getting in the weeds here. So, But I rented an RV during COVID and, and myself and my ex-girlfriend traveled all around. So we did Northeastern Canada. And wow, that was pretty shocking. Like Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Newfoundland. We put the RV on a seven hour ferry to Newfoundland and traveled all around there. So yeah, nice. It was, it was an amazing, amazing year long trip. It's very nice. So from that moment on, when did the first idea of uh, the Groove Cruise came up? Came up? Uh, so my friends, I used to write like about my travels. I used to live in Australia. I went to school over there for a semester and I started writing to just friends and family about like what my experiences were and so forth. Then all my friends were like, put a trip together and we'll go. And I was like, all right, well, I don't want to put my friends on a bus, but cruises are kind of cool. So I remember being on a Christmas cruise with my parents and my brother and it was like 930 at night. 
everything was shut down in the nightclub. <laughs> they were playing Red Red Wine, YMCA, Macarena, and then a country song, and then a hip hop song, and then like Nine Inch Nails. I mean, it was just awful. And unfortunately, no, 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 no. Red Red Wine is it's such a great song. Come on, a dance song, such a great. I'll never forget it. It was like his day, Red Red Wine in a nightclub. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So yeah, and cruise ship nightly entertainment still, for my opinion, is awful. <laughs> and um, so I just had this vision of what it would be like to have really good music and good, you know, all my friends on a cruise ship. Uh, so that was the idea. So I put a cruise together for some friends and had 125 people that went on the first cruise from a 375 person email list that I had. And that was in 2004. Wow. And called it the group cruise. It was on Royal Caribbean for seven days. And I just saw how life-changing it was for those, those 125 people that went. And I knew I was onto something. So I didn't know what exactly that was. But uh, hold on. You, the 125 people in the crew, you didn't charter a boat at that moment. No, 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 no. So it was like a regular Royal Caribbean cruise with like 3,500 people on it. And 125 of them were groove crews. Right. So how did you negotiate with Royal Caribbean Cruise at that time to be able to play the music that you want for your <laughs> guests and, and have like a, a separate group of, uh, of the entire boat. That was always a challenge. And it still is with groups that we do today with uh, the cruise lines. Um, but so basically we would rent like certain venues like lounges or the nightclub when the nightclub wasn't working or, or being used. And then we would do beach parties and the destinations and various things like that. So that's kind of how we made it unique and uh, you know, the higher cost because the, uh, Group cruise costs, you know, quite a bit more than a regular cruise just because of all the talent and production and speakers and lights and like all that stuff that we bring on. So yeah, that was the very first one. I had no money. I couldn't afford to rent speakers or CDJs and mixers and stuff. So I had to have my friends drive them down from Michigan, which is where I'm originally from. And yeah, it's because I couldn't afford to rent them in Miami. So we drove them from Michigan and Chicago. And that was the first groove cruise and I had uh, no money when I started it. I didn't know one person in the cruise industry. I didn't know one DJ. I didn't know one musician, didn't know any bands, but I put a business plan together to charter a cruise ship in five years. So I was in the network marketing industry before. So I understood like compounding and multiplying and, you know, that kind of stuff, building teams and word of mouth marketing and stuff. So uh, my goal was to go from 125, 250, 500, 1,000, and 2,000 is to charter a cruise ship. So that was my five-year goal. Uh, long story short, it took me seven years to charter my first cruise ship. And Amazing. Yeah, since then, we've done 28 full ships. Um, we were Norwegian and Carnival's Charter Partner of the Year. Wow. What that means is basically renting a ship from Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Celebrity, Nor Norwegian, Princess, uh, MSC. And they're two to four, well, 4,500 passengers is the next one, uh, 2,000 to 4,000 passengers uh, experiences for three to seven days, generally. Amazing. So for three days, I remember I could do that. But seven days <laughs> of cruise and party, and I don't think there's much sleep there. I've <laughs> never done. H how do you manage to do that seven <laughs> days in a row? So if you're referring to Groove Cruise, which is probably what I'm most famous for, because uh, that's what I started the business with, that is four days. And yes, it is 96 hours nonstop music. The next one has 11 stages. It's going to have 4,500 people. It's I think we have 70 rooms left out of 2,000. It's the 20-year anniversary. We have an enormous lineup and um, race car track and laser tag and like all this stuff. But Oh, shit. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just coming back from a series of events. So that, that's the feeling exactly. How do you are able to hold for four oh, days in a row? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so there's chill areas on the ship. It's not just partying. We have 53 artist-hosted activities. Uh, we have, uh, so I have a foundation as well, a 501c3 that I've had for over 10 years. And so we have volunteer activities where we work out of orphanages and we have mental health panels on board. I've dealt with mental health myself. I've um, had uh, our production manager committed suicide. I've had some other friends that have passed away, some family members that have struggled with mental health, including myself when the pandemic happened. 
And how do you spot those situations and how do you just know what's going on and how do you balance your life, especially in nightlife, which is probably the most difficult industry or, or just music in general and being on the road all the time and in and out of nightclubs and drinking and partying and drugs and just being around all that stuff all the time and then being on the road sometimes 300 days a year is very, very taxing on your body for these, for these DJs and and their families and how do you balance all that stuff so that's some topics we also have a uh, like suicide prevention and other stuff that we do on board we have demo listening parties we have what oasis which is like a chill area with no alcohol and like chill music and massages and all different kinds of yoga and meditations and healers and like all that stuff so yes it's partying but there's places to get away and or you can you know party nonstop for four days. So that's, that's group cruise. And then we also do other experiences as well. We've done salsa cruise, we've done rock, we've done heavy metal, we've done yoga, we've done country. And we have a dental continuing education cruise coming up called Smiles at Sea. We have a board game cruise called Dice Tower. So pretty much anything that's on land, we can basically make float. No uh, red, red wine cruise yet? Not yet. Not, no, no. <laughs> there was a wine lovers cruise that we almost did, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that definitely have to be the theme song <laughs> what was the reaction at the beginning when uh, you decided to do that what would the dj say what would the producers say are they all on board when you call them or just nah just want to wait and see uh, i don't want to put my brand there what was the environment you mean like the cruise lines kind of accepting what we do the cruise line except uh, on one hand and on the other hand the reaction of, of djs and producers Uh, of this new concept? Uh, yeah, so the cruise lines are difficult to work with, especially with groups. You charter the ship, it's a little more flexible. Uh, with groups, Why? They're very, uh, well, they're very cautious of the other guests on board the ship, like families and you know old people, which is the majority of cruisers, not everybody, and it's getting lower now from the age demo. But um, yeah, they're just concerned with how it's going to affect the other guests, stuff like that. So. That's kind of the challenge from their side. And then from the artist side, it's also very difficult. Luckily, I don't handle talent anymore. I have talent buyers that buy my talent. But uh, yeah, some artists just won't get on cruise ships, unfortunately, or they're just not down for it. I remember one cruise we booked, uh, Slayer, which is a heavy metal band, a huge heavy metal band. And they were just like, no, we are, need security 24 7 and we need this and we're concerned about our fans are nuts and are, you know they're going to be all over us and we're not going to have any space and then we get on the ship and they're just like why do we have security outside of our door and why do we have this and we don't need escorts everywhere we go it just everyone's cool <laughs> yeah. so. very interesting also kind of like your super fans for the artists too so it's like it's not your regular i don't know like you're just regular clientele that goes to shows to see bands or DJs. It's like mm. your, your super fans, if you will, or they're paying, a, a, you know, thousands of dollars generally per person to be there. Wow. And when it comes to you, you became quite a legend, and especially for the people going on the cruise. So how is the relationship you have with the people? And they're still the same, uh, some of the same people that were there 20 years ago that are still coming or it's a new generation? So yeah, it's been interesting. We do have around a 70% return rate, which is extremely high in any oh. group. And yes, there is some people that are coming back from the very, very first group cruise 20 years ago. So that's a blessing. It's it's just crazy to see because I, I remember that first one. I was like, man, I'm onto something. Like lives have literally been changed. Relationships are formed. And I still have some people from that first one talk about, you know friendships that they've created or I've even that I've created that I've kept in touch with people from from those cruises even then and just how that has kind of multiplied now we have over 4,000 people going so from 125 to 4,000 it's a huge jump over 20 years and the amount of lives changed I did a post not too long ago about is group cruise transformational and I was kind of shocked at the responses and stories that people shared about new lovers that they met or new business relationships or they went on our orphanage experience and now they want to you know go back home and start volunteering more and get involved 
or they went to one of our mental health panels and decided to, you know, dig into that more, or maybe they had an aha moment during that, or maybe they met an artist that one of the artists hosted activities playing ping pong with so-and-so and got to meet their favorite artist and send their music if they're a producer to them and get feedback on it right there on the spot. Or then that just kind of catapulted their, their music career or their art side of their brain. And so, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's been pretty interesting the effect that we've had on the people that go and just the world in general. Like I'm a happier, you know, some of this one guy said he's just a happier person and it saved their marriage and they come home, you know, they're disconnected for four days completely, just living their best life, dressing in costumes, dressing, you know, outrageous, like they never would do in their, in their home community or their home clique. And uh, just being free and being yourself, no judgments and dancing and, and just partying your, your little booty away and just no cares in the world. And then you come home to your kids and just you're reconnected and just more Mm -hmm. full of life and your business, you're more full of life. And just, I don't know, it's it's been interesting, like hearing all those, those types of stories. It's very humbling. I'm listening to you and I'm, and I'm picturing the the people that came 20 years ago, coming back now with their kids. Yeah, we have that. We have, uh, we have several People that are bringing their kids on, the, well, every year, but this one in particular. And my parents go on group cruise every year, too. Nice. I told them when I chartered my first ship, which is nine years ago, that they have to come. And I haven't been able to get rid of them since. <laughs> ah, that's wonderful. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way. And actually, there was another story, this woman, and there's a couple of them, there's two or three of these, actually. This girl who brought her parents on and her dad had dementia and her mom had terminal ill for with uh, cancer. And she passed away. But... She wanted to bring them on Groove Cruise because she didn't want to bring them to like a festival or a club because logistically it's just a complete nightmare and it's not safe per se for challenged individuals. So a cruise ship is very safe and simple and you don't really have to plan anything and everything's there medically and, you know, whatever. And uh, for handicaps and stuff like that. So, yeah, she brought her parents on and they just had the time of their life and they were just, you know, living their best life. And it was it was beautiful to, to see that experience but just the generational stuff is weird to me it's so weird like having people bring their kids or even their parents is, is kind of interesting how did you cope with uh the pandemic because everything stopped it was a nightmare beyond a nightmare <laughs> yeah i was at the in the heat of it in the cruise industry so we were the first industry to get shut down it was all over the news it was just like uh, Absolute mess. And then you throw in the live event space and that's even more complication with large crowds. So yeah, it was, uh, it was extremely difficult. I had, I listened to a webinar by uh, Vern Harnish from EO right in the beginning of it. And he's also in the events industry. And he said, you got to let everybody go that you possibly can. He's like, you've got to hunker down. You don't know if this is going to last for two weeks, two months or two years. And he was spot on. And in the cruise industry, it was about two years, to be honest, before yeah. it actually finally came back in full force. Uh, we just had our cruise in January 23. And let's say the last one before that was, well, 2020, that was full board. So actually really three years to be fully, fully in. We did have a cruise that sailed in January 2022, but we lost like 700 people the week before, or the weeks leading before the event because they had almost, because it was at the height of Omicron. So we lost a whole bunch of people with that. And that was a nightmare. So yeah, it was really difficult and had to let everybody in my team go pretty much on one Zoom call. And it was very depressing and very challenging with my mental health. Luckily, I was around my nieces who were three and six at the time, and they don't know what the hell's going on, nor do they care. And they're just balls of loving energy and just excited not to go to school (laughs) and like, you know, have dance parties at home. And I think that really helped me was. Uh, number one, being around kids helped me with my depression at the time. And then also, whenever you're feeling those emotions, you're kind of in yourself. And it's about me, 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 me. And I got out of that by randomly one morning, I woke up at six in the morning, and I don't wake up early. And then I started journaling. And I also don't journal. I started journaling about like, how can I help? How can I help? How can I get out of myself? And how can I help? How can I help? And I came up with this um idea to utilize all of our contacts and do online streaming or we call them virtual sail aways. So basically like um, online live cruise sailing events, if you will. And they were live on Twitch and we raised around $50,000. And then we had people go onto our website and apply for grants. And we sent out 
250 grants to people that were experiencing hardships in our community. And the messages that we got of just somebody caring and they gave them hope and helped them with their bills or just things like that. Because the entertainment industry was a mess. And if anyone was living a paycheck to paycheck, like they were about to be on the street. Like it was really, really difficult. So I was like, yeah, I'm in a bad place, but, um, you know, there's people that are always in worse places than, than any of us. We're on a video Zoom right now, and, the, you know, the vast majority of the planet doesn't have Zoom. So they're, you know, not as, may not have internet and may not have these, these things that mm-hmm. we think are privilege is a good word. And so, yeah, just kind of getting out of, out of that and thinking about other people helped me a lot to get through it, but but yeah, it was, it was difficult, <laughs> to say the least. It was very difficult. Because it was like my baby, watching my baby die overnight, going from seven figures a month to zero. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We never do it alone, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Do, yeah. do you see a difference now negotiating with Cruise Line after uh, that, the thing re- everything reopened? Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> They were very challenging, and I'll just talk broadly here, uh, but they were very challenging, I'd say, during the pandemic and thinking that they're going to come out of this and their rates are going to be X, Y, Z, and there's just absolutely no way. Eventually, I would say in the last couple months, they've started to become a little more uh, realistic. I'm just talking about pricing here. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's it's the people behind the scenes, the revenue managers and things like that that just think that they're going to, the cruise industry is going to do X and then it doesn't, or, you know, generally they're overestimating what they think they're going to do. And then that kind of falls onto, onto us as charter, charter errors. There's not too many of us in the country that do what, what we do. So yeah, I'd say they're a little more flexible now. Some more than others. It's kind of interesting being in the business for 20 years. Like sometimes they're super aggressive and they really want the business. And then sometimes they're like, this is only, you know, 5% of our business. We don't care about you guys. And we're not going to change terms or change these contractual terms. And sometimes they're like, of course, what do we got to do? Like, let's get this done. Let's do this. And then I don't know. So it's it's kind of interesting because some cruise lines one year, they're they're awesome and they really love you on your business. And some some years they're just not. And they're just like, we don't need you. <laughs> is it the same people you're dealing with or just uh, a change that create different attitude? Or, or uh, I remember having to uh, love, which is really a very hard word in this case, people that were in procurement. And now it's the people that are a revenue manager that, that really care about the experience. So did that change because of the individual or is just like a, a policy from the company? Yeah, I think it starts at the top. So if there's a change with the CEO or president, I feel like that's when I've seen the changes kind of trickle down is from the top. So if the president and CEO is aggressive or or wants the charter business or large group business, I feel like that has to kind of trickle down. If, if their focus is elsewhere or more on like cost savings or you know, we think that we can get more revenue and less drama and less work if we, you know, go direct to consumer, then that's just their philosophy. And then they're just not as willing to, you know, work with us or or be more flexible with terms and things like that. No difference than dealing with uh, hotels, right? No, for sure. For sure. Yeah, we do a lot of hotel buyouts and uh, group contracts and stuff like that. So yeah, similar, similar. Definitely a similar concept for sure. You're kind of risking that the pricing is going to be X in the future. And uh, a lot of times when you do events, you just, you have to have the, you have to have the accommodations and they need to be near where you're doing the events or at where you're doing the events. or you're not going to have an event because no one can stay there or right because you don't have the hotel block at $400 a night. Now, you know, they have to pay $800 a night down the street and for a lesser, you know, lesser hotel or lesser experience. So yeah, that's always a challenge with any events as accommodations. It's always a huge yeah. challenge because you don't want to take too much risk and you don't want to be in a contract where you can't fulfill the um, accommodation requirements. And that's always difficult too that, that I've found with land events is you book a Marriott and then people have Hilton points or Hyatt points. And it's like, well, <laughs> so you might have 10,000 people at an event and then you think you're going to sell out 500 rooms, but it's like, you might not. <laughs> So how do you gauge that? I don't know. <laughs> well, with the boat, at least you have uh, 
the event uh, venue and uh, the accommodation in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it that uh, people, cooperation w will be hesitant to, uh, to do a meeting uh, on a boat? It sounds to me, uh, I remember chartering uh, boats uh, for clients mm -hmm. uh, exclusively. It, it was a totally different experience and a great experience. Yeah. So what would you say to, um, to people considering that? I don't know what it is, but so, some executives at corporations are anti-cruise, and I'm not sure if they think it's like a cattle call or just some of the negative, they're going to get sick, which is ridiculous. You have far more propensity to get sick at a mall or a school or a church than we do on a cruise ship. Statistically, it's not even close. <laughs> but I just think there's just this negative vision that's from the media as well. If they're watching the news all the time, that, that there's that. But when you get all the same people on a cruise ship, I call it like forced relationships. And we do corporate as well. So like American Eagle Outfitters has been one of my clients for like 10 years. But when you have everybody who's all of the same company or passions or lifestyle, there is nowhere. There is no conference center. There is no festival grounds. There is There's no like convention space that is going to give you the relationship building that is even remotely close to on a cruise ship because you can't go anywhere. So it's what I call like forced relationships or serendipitous relationships. And that's where the magic really happens. It's like when you go around to a conference, you got, it's the same thing. So you have like the sessions during the day, cocktail party, dinner, maybe entertainment. Next day, trade show, sessions, cocktail party, dinner, maybe entertainment. And that's right. the same thing. Every single conference, they're all the same. And how many people at those conferences or trade shows you actually keep in touch with? You got, you know, 30 business cards at the end of the day or 10 or whatever it is. And then you really keep in touch with those people. Do those people keep in touch with you? 10% maybe if that, if you look six months down the road, 1% maybe that you kept in touch with, like if you're lucky, 5%. I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but when you're at the pool or you're at the beach and you're in a cabana and you're sharing that once in a lifetime experience, or maybe you go fishing, or maybe you do something unique and fun that's that's just, you know, memorable. That's where the magic's really going to happen. Yeah. And then, of course, you, you see them at the conf you do conferences on board the ship, and you can do sessions and trainings. and like Yeah, in that. terms of conference rooms, okay. they're extremely right. well-equipped, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of times when you do a hotel, you got to pay for the absorbent rates for renting, you know, a projector or a space and all that, where that's, for the most part, included with the cruise lines. Or a gallon of coffee. <laughs> yeah, a gallon of coffee for $80. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at the people going on Groove Cruise today and uh, those that were uh, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, is it the same type of profile or, or uh, it, it changed completely? I would say it's similar profile. It's gotten older as I've gotten older. So our average age is like 35. I'm trying to trying to keep it a little down. But yeah, I would say the profile is similar to how it has been. It's just more people and bigger ships and forth. But it's still... Is it, is, it, is it like young professionals or is it people that are not working or is it independent or is it like the what I call the ding, the double income, no kids? <laughs> what type or, or is it a little bit of everything? It's a little bit of everything. I mean, there's 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 gays, there's straights, there's swingers, there's there's lesbians. I mean, there's all different types of cows. There's people with kids, there's people without kids. I would say that what brings everybody together is the music and just the vibe and the community of people and just being in that loving environment that we just don't have in our world per se, where you can just leave for four days and leave this world behind and be around everyone that's just you know, of the same musical preferences and just, you know, loving life. And whether that's electronic music like Groove Cruise or that's country or rock or heavy metal or salsa or whatever it is, it really creates magic. Music is very powerful and uh, connecting, I guess you could say. And yeah, it really brings people together in a, in a big and deep way. If I wanted to do a dad joke, I would say music was my first love, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Glad you didn't say it. <laughs> uh, looking at the future, Jason, what what is the, the what are the plans? D do you see yourself doing that in 20 years? Um, what are your dreams? That's a good question. So um, I never started my business to make money or to like uh, 
what's the word to sell it, I guess you could say. So it's been kind of a lifestyle business or I'm more of an artist to, I want to create something that excites people's lives and changes the world and makes the world a better place. So that's always been where my, where my heart is at with that said, I'm not an idiot. I, I know how numbers work. My dad was a math teacher and I have mouths to feed and families that support that rely on me. So it's a lot. So I have to be able to make profit and, you know, I'm not stupid in that regard, but my heart is always in like changing the world and making people happy and doing the right thing and sticking to my my values in life. So I could see it going for 20 more years. Yes, <laughs> I definitely could. There's some other stuff that we're working on in different verticals too, like um, sports and music and food and wine, maybe. <laughs> Uh, there's a few like business ones that have been hitting me up or masterminds that they want to do on cruises or just anything really. There's there's lots of different groups of people or niches of people that, you know, we can make float and cruise ship is the best place I believe in the world to do that. Awesome. My last question for today, when we meet in a year time, listening to a song of UB40, what are and with a bottle of champagne very important <laughs> what are we going to celebrate when is this next time in one year in one, uh, year one year we are going to celebrate the launch of uh, can't really say this the expansion of wet travel and group cruise <laughs> The the expansion of, yeah, I would say the expansion because there's many different ways that we can grow, whether that's doing uh, other group cruises internationally. Yeah, like in Asia and um, South Africa and Europe and so forth like that, South America too. And also bigger and better. And yeah, just always evolving. We're always innovating. We're always evolving. We're always trying new things. And we're always just like, keeping our eyes and ears to the ground and listening to our clients. So every, every one of our clients is the captain. They're the most important person in the world. We have exhaustive surveys after our events and we read all of them and listen to our guests. And um, yeah, they're the ones that steer the ship. So yeah, I would say in, in a year, we'll be celebrating a big launch for the next 20 years. Um, we're going through a whole rebranding right now. So yeah, we'll be celebrating that for sure. Awesome. And in 40 years, we'll be with our Walker uh, on the deck that singing the music. We've been uh, talking about creating a group cruise retirement community. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, my friend, for taking the time. A lot of groove, have fun, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. <clears throat> Jason, thank you so much for taking the time. Truly enjoy our conversation. I wish I can go to all those uh, crews that you're putting together. And the Groove Cruise, uh, for somebody who likes music and dancing like me, that would be wonderful. Thank you for sharing uh, all those insights with us. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to connect with me, please connect on LinkedIn or join my Facebook group, www.eventbusinessformula.com slash group. And if you enjoy this conversation, please share it with your network. Thank you. Bye-bye.